I'm Bill Kovacic, and I'm a member of the law faculty at the George Washington University Law School. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to prepare a video for participation in the inaugural meeting of the Competition Development Foundation. I would like to give you the perspective from an international point of view of why the pro-competition reforms proposed in today's agenda are so vital to the future economic development of Ukraine and why they can play a vital constructive role in developing a platform for economic growth and progress in the future. From the point of view of international experience, I'd like to offer three reasons in support of the reform agenda that is before you today for discussion at this conference. The first deals with cost reduction. In a number of countries, greater competition in natural gas markets has spurred dramatic cost reduction that has promoted the decrease in prices at both wholesale and retail markets. These changes have tremendous positive implications for economic growth. First, they provide major industrial and commercial users with lower input prices that enable them to pursue a wider array of products, to make investments that increase production, and in addition, provide residential users with much lower costs. And by giving residential users a visible significant payout from pro-competition policies, this tends to increase social support for pro-market reforms that increase growth. The second reason to support the package of proposed reforms is to improve energy security. The reforms before you, among other ways, by improving interconnection within Ukraine and greater integration with European natural gas infrastructure, will give Ukraine much greater flexibility to adapt to possible supply disruptions in the future. The reform package in Ukraine would proceed in parallel with reforms that are being discussed within the European Union. Because within the European Union, there is also an awareness that improved interconnectedness, a greater integration of the natural gas distribution markets, will give Europe a much stronger basis for dealing with possible supply disruptions in the future. If Ukraine pursues these reforms in parallel, and achieves deeper integration with the European natural gas infrastructure, Ukraine too will have greater ability to deal with possible supply disruptions and to respond flexibly to any contingencies that ar arise in the future. The third reason to support the reform package deals with investment and innovation. The pro-competition reforms proposed here have many analogs in other countries. And what we've seen in other countries that have pursued these reforms is the improvement of the investment climate for improving infrastructure and related services. An unanticipated benefit, which is hard to predict precisely in the future, but has still been very real in other countries, is improved innovation. The discovery of services the discovery of different delivery methods, the discovery of new business models, the development of new technology to improve the delivery of natural gas, and the improvement of the network by which gas deliveries are scheduled. All of these changes have been associated with pro-competition reforms. We can't identify precisely how this will unfold, but in so many key infrastructure markets, whether they involve energy, whether they involve telecommunications or transport, a major payoff from improving competitive conditions has been to spur innovation in ways that one could not have anticipated beforehand. In effect, what the pro-competition reforms do is to create enabling conditions that permit entrepreneurs to test new methods of delivery, 
to offer new packages of services that go with the basic provision of national, natural gas supplies. And in doing so, to open up the opportunity for the development of new markets, new services, new products that greatly improve the well-being of industrial and commercial users and the well-being of residential users as well. And I would be willing to assert to you, based on international experience, it is this last category of developments that tends to be the most beneficial and useful. So three reasons, again, to embrace the package of suggested reforms and the agenda that is the subject for this conference. Improved cost reduction that yields lower prices in wholesale and retail markets. An improved flexibility in the natural gas delivery system that provides an important buffer against potential supply disruptions and permits not only within Ukraine, but between Ukraine and the European Union, a better level of integration that enhances supply flexibility and adaptability. And third, an environment that improves prospects for investment and innovation that promise to improve the services that industrial, commercial, and residential users obtain over time. To say that we would pursue a pro-competitive policy and liberalize natural gas markets is not to suggest that there is no important role for regulatory oversight. There will be. It will be important to have an effective mechanism for ensuring that for genuine natural monopoly services, that there is price-related oversight. It would probably be wise if this residual mechanism is subject to a condition that it be revisited on a mandatory basis every few years to test the logic of continuing regulatory oversight for those areas. And indeed to ask which areas of the natural gas market are now subject to effective competition where previously we would have thought only a single supplier could do the job. And a last vital ingredient of the residual regulatory mechanism is indeed the anti-monopoly committee of Ukraine. It will be important, I think, for its role to be enhanced, both to provide oversight uh, for a possible violations of the anti-monopoly law either collusive restraints or exclusionary restraints, but also to provide a vital basis for microeconomic policy analysis associated with the development of an effective, better performing energy market in Ukraine. To do this, one will have to commit resources. I am aware of the painful constraints that the government of Ukraine now faces in deciding how to use precious limited public funds and how to distribute those across the array of different public institutions in Ukraine. I want to suggest to you, though, that enhancing the outlay of resources for the Anti-Monopoly Committee will yield a significant rate of return for Ukraine. And by improving the capability of that agency, by giving it superior resources, Ukraine will have at its disposal a wonderful mechanism for improving pro-competition policies in Ukraine and stimulating growth and superior economic performance. Thus, a last vital piece of the reform package is an enhanced role for the Anti-Monopoly Committee and the commitment of additional public resources to ensure that it has the capacity to fulfill this important role. I look forward to participating with you through a, an audio hookup later today to discuss these and related issues in more detail. Thank you very much.